Hi, Zach. Hey, how are you doing? Good, it's Maria from B&H. Yeah, how are you doing? I just got out of the water. Let me get my ear pods and we can talk. Okay, awesome. I heard you are speaking at this year's B&H's Virtual Optics, so I wanted to introduce you to the audience. Do you have time for 21 questions? Yes, I'd love to do the 21 questions. Amazing. So, what are you up to today? I actually just got out of the water from shooting Sunrise at Sandy Beach. It's one of my favorite places in the world to shoot at, and it's where I learned to shoot water photography. That's so great, and you're so lucky to have that so close to you. <laughs> Absolutely, and we're very fortunate here in Hawaii that our cases are low, our beaches are reopened, um, and our water has always been open. So, fully legal and a lot of fun, and it's a very healthy and great way to stay outdoors. That's great. And you're a Canon Explorer of Light, right? So what kind of photographer are you? I am a Canon Explorer of Light. So I am a water photographer. So I shoot surf, water, anything and in between that involves water, that's me. That's awesome. And has this quarantine affected your workflow? How are you, are you excited to just kind of get back out there with all the surfers? Absolutely. I mean, I think that it's affected a little bit, but with our beaches remaining open, we've had some amazing surf and swell, and there hasn't been too much effects in that regard. But you know, it's, it's affecting everyone in different ways from work and job. I usually travel quite a bit. There's a lot of speaking engagements and um, a lot of it has had to change, but it's okay. And so what got you started in photography? My dad actually got me started in photography. So my dad is a commercial photographer and he shoots hotels, food and fashion. And it's something that I fell in love with the ocean. And that's what brought me to where I am today of shooting. And then what got you so passionate about going in the water? Well, growing up on an island, you're surrounded by water. So being passionate about the ocean is very easy. It's, it's just absolutely gorgeous over here. And being able to be in the water, it's incredible. And what was your first camera when you started to get, master your skills? My first camera was a Canon EOS 630. And that was a film camera, 35 millimeter. And my dad got me to shoot with film before I could go to digital. Um, as it was just as I was starting to get in, interested in photography, digital was just coming around, or I think it was a Canon 20D, and he thought that it was a good thing to kind of learn and hone my skills in film first. He's right, that's a good dad. Yeah, he's a great dad. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the first water housing you were using? That was a homemade water housing by a friend. It was made out of fiberglass. Now I'm using these Aquatech water housings and they're quite incredible. Uh, state of the art, high tech, can change all the lenses, all the functions. Um, can't beat it now. The technology is incredible to complement the camera technology. Yeah, so what's your go-to setup now? In this housing right now, um, I'm using the Canon 1DX Mark III with the Aquatech Evo housing. And it's incredible. It has a 50 millimeter lens on it right now and using a Lexar um, CF Express card. Cool. And is there a specific photo or series that helped you kind of put yourself on the map? You know, I think it was my willingness to swim and go further, um, push myself further be in the spot, find that position, and just really find those extreme moments and putting the viewer there. So there is a photo that I call the perfect day, and it's of a surfer who's a friend of mine, Christian Rodongo, and he's in the barrel in Tahiti with a perfect rainbow over his head. So it, it's, it's a hard one to beat as the perfect day for me. And you mentioned that you do a lot of speaking engagements and you are speaking at this year's B&H's Virtual Optic. Is teaching a big part of your career as well? Oh, I'm, I'm very excited to speak at this year's Virtual Optic. I am really looking forward to it. Yeah, speaking is actually a big part of my whole career and what I do. I love to give back. I love to teach others and expand because this is a love for the ocean, as you can see. And so for me, it's like, how would you not want to share that with others and do that? As I'm looking out right now at Sandy's, I remember shooting here six, eight years ago, being the only one in the water. 
I see six, eight people right now shooting in the water. That wasn't because of me. It's a, you know, the rolling out of, of digital and becoming more readily available. But how can I help those ones shooting with GoPros or different items like that to take it to the next step, to take it to that Canon DSLR that they can put in their hands and they can take it to their next level of photography. So you mentioned you have a big passion about uh, advocating and teaching, and you have a pretty large following on social media now. Has social media played a part in your career and helping you kind of send the message that you want to tell? Absolutely. I think social media is a great platform. Beforehand, we had magazines, and you know, with 100,000 circulation for a magazine a month, that's how many people they're hitting. Now with several hundred thousand followers, we can hit that several times a day and get the messages across. We've become our own broadcasts, our own platforms, and it's incredible. Yeah. And you mentioned your dad is the one that helped you get into photography. How has he played a role in your career and helped you kind of guide you through this? Well, my dad has always been there for me. He's been someone that has been such a supporter no matter what I was doing, whether it's photography or not. And to me, that was the most incredible thing because he was there when I didn't like photography as well as when I did, just same and passionately about both. And that's what's incredible to me to have that support. So switching up gears a little bit, what are some tips for somebody looking to get started in water photography or sports photography or wildlife photography like you and maybe a little worried about getting their camera wet? Absolutely. So I think if you want to get into some sports photography or water photography, I think the best thing to do would be to get out in the water, um, feel comfortable first. You know, before you take a camera out of any sort, make sure you're comfortable with the water. Make sure you're comfortable with the location. Um, get out there and kind of feel it out. For sports photography, know the sport. You're going to know where they're going to end up. Sports photography is a lot more high pace and high action. So you want to know the sport. If you don't know the sport, you're going to miss the action. So kind of know those moments. So I take it that you're a pretty good surfer then. I'm an okay surfer. I, I love the ocean in all regards from surf, body surf, swimming, anything to do with the ocean, I'm in there. <laughs> and so I know you're a Hawaii native and I hear the food's amazing. What's your favorite? Food is amazing here. You know, it's such a variety. I love Japanese food, the Hawaiian food, everything in between. There, there's so much variety. We eat something different every day here. And aside from surfers, you also photograph animals, right? Yes. Which are your favorite. Yeah, some wildlife, some animal wildlife, um, underwater wildlife. And it's incredible to be in the water with these dolphins or turtles or whales. Um, they're, they're massive. You know what I mean? You're in their home and these are wild animals. And so showing them that respect and being that is something very important. Do you have a favorite to photograph? Uh, I love filming dolphins. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we love to go swim out and shoot dolphins in the wild there. And you know, you want to always give them that due respect, but if they come to you, they're so friendly, they swim by you, it's, it's quite an experience. And which are the most difficult to capture? Probably whales. Whales are a little more difficult. They are very protected here, so it uh, would be not in Hawaii if you're filming whales generally, um, if you're in the water shooting them. Um, and you're just being very cautious and they're bigger than school buses. So it's something you want to be very cautious of. All right, trick question. Sunrise okay. or sunset? Sunrise. We're at Sandy's right now uh, for sunrise. Just shot. It's my favorite time of the day. And so what has been some of the most challenging shoots you've had to do? Some of the most challenging shoots um, are definitely ones that are outside of the box. Um, I'm very adept and comfortable in the water, but shooting um, Michael Phelps this past year was something of a challenge. You know, shooting in the pool of someone that is the most decorated Olympian of all time was a little um, scary, but we got it done and um, very stoked and was able to shoot it for a campaign around his new like swim line. And it was a little scary though, you know, to shoot someone at that stature in the pool, but I knew I could do it because I was comfortable in the water. Of course, that's awesome. Yeah. And you, you mentioned you travel to a lot of places. Do you have a favorite? Tahiti, definitely Tahiti. That's my favorite place to be, go, see. Um, I can't wait to get back there. And which have the biggest waves? Um, Hawaii has the biggest waves. We have the craziest, biggest waves during the winter time. 
and if you had to choose one to photograph forever, surfers or animals? I would say surfers. There's a lot yeah. more unpredictability and action in that sense um, and high pace action sports. And if you weren't a photographer, what would you be? If I was not a photographer, I think I'd have something to do with the ocean, oceanography of some sort. Mm -hmm. I love like the weather patterns and the ocean currents and everything like that. It's With my job, it's forced me to learn all of those, which I love. And what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Best piece of advice is from my dad, shoot loose, edit tight. Wow, that's perfect. And aside from your camera, what's your favorite piece of gear? Aside from my camera, my favorite piece of gear, uh, it'd probably be my, my iPhone. I mean, I think I'm on it a little too much to these days, <laughs> but uh, with work and everything going, it's something that um, is a necessity for everyday life. Sure. And last question, who should we interview next? Last question is who to interview next. Um, I think you guys should interview Larry Chen. I think you'd have a very good conversation with Larry Chen and he's a great friend of mine and a fellow explorer of light. Cool, absolutely, we'll definitely get in touch with him. Awesome, thank you so much Maria and have a great day, I'm gonna jump back in the water. Amazing, thank you so much, all okay. right, bye. Take care, bye.